Hello, so the state of New South Wales is currently in lockdown, so I can't travel to make videos the way I would like to. So what I'm doing instead is I'm taking the opportunity to go back to the archives and pull out some older projects. A while ago, in fact, quite a while ago, I met up with an amazing human and regular contributor to the Australian Opal Centre's fossil collection, Vicky, who spoke about some of her favourite fossil items that she's donated to the AOC's collection, including a great example of a fossil of one of my favourite creatures ever. And that fossil is this thing, which looks kind of like a starfish, maybe, or possibly an animal's paw, but it's actually part of the mouth of one of my favourite animals ever, a prehistoric lungfish. One of the reasons why I love lungfish tooth plates is because of their shape. To me, it's just a funky shape. It almost looks like a footprint or um, like another type of animal. This fossil is over a hundred million years old, but lungfish still exist today. And we have a species all of our own in Australia, the Queensland lungfish. The Queensland lungfish is found in the Wide Bay and Burnett regions in Queensland, primarily in the Burnett and Mary rivers. There are a handful of lungfish species across the world. The other five species of lungfish are native to Africa and to South America. Queensland lungfish are awesome for a number of reasons. One of those reasons is right there in the name, the lungfish. These are fish that have lungs, or more accurately, these are fish that have a lung, as the Queensland lungfish only has one of them. The Queensland lungfish is the only species existing to have only one lung. All of the other surviving kinds of lungfish have two of them. Australian lungfish or Queensland lungfish also have functioning gills, just like a normal fish, which means that they're capable of processing oxygen in two different ways. From the water using their gills and from the air using their lung. The Queensland lungfish is the only extant lungfish species that can breathe both air and water. Some of the other species can breathe water when juvenile, but they lose that capability as they mature into adults. Being able to breathe air gives the Australian lungfish an extra option, I guess, for breathing when the water is not suitable to be metabolised by the gills. For example, when the water is deoxygenated, which could be due to high temperatures or because it's very dirty, both of which occur during times of drought. Another reason lungfish are incredible is because they can be really gigantic fish. Lungfish have been known in the right conditions to grow to up to a metre and a half long and weigh up to 40 kilograms. Breathing air through a lung isn't the lungfish's only superpower either. Lungfish are electroreceptive, which means that they have the ability to sense electrical fields, which is a skill that they use to locate and target their prey. Other animals that have the same ability include sharks, catfish, and monotremes. We made a video some time ago about monotremes with Dr. Elizabeth Smith. Make sure you check that one out if you're interested in other incredibly weird Australian animals that have electroreceptive superpowers. The Queensland lungfish can't do everything that other lungfishes can do. Other species of lungfish are capable of cocooning themselves into the mud to hibernate for long dry periods, but the Australian species is not able to do that. It's only capable of surviving away from water for a couple of days at most, provided it doesn't dry out. But that's pretty impressive for a fish. Yet another reason that lungfish are amazing, and probably my personal favourite reason for why lungfish are incredible, is that lungfish are a living fossil, which means that they haven't really changed much since the creatures that lived at Lightning Ridge over a hundred million years ago and left their opalized remains for us to find millennia and millennia later. Lungfish trace their biological lineage all the way back about 420 million years to the early Devonian period, which was also known rather appropriately, as the Age of Fishes. And not only have they been around as a species for an incredibly long time, but individual lungfish also live for a really long time. Once they reach adulthood, they're actually a really hardy and resilient species. No doubt being able to breathe both air and water has helped considerably with that. And individual lungfish usually live for at least 25 to 30 years in the wild, but more extreme examples have been recorded. A Queensland lungfish called Grandad that was kept at the Shedd Museum in Chicago lived to 90 years, which again is pretty impressive for a fish. Lungfish are partly cartilaginous, which means that not all of their skeleton is made from bone. Quite a bit of it is made from cartilage, which is uh, the soft stuff that makes up the tip of your nose. Cartilage doesn't generally become fossilized, so most of the skeletons of prehistoric lungfish 
don't get fully preserved. There's usually only one part of a lungfish that becomes fossilised or opalised, and that's the tooth plate. To me, they're just, they're so distinct. You go, that can't be a knobby, it can't be a piece of opal, it's got to be a fossil, and this particular one's got some pretty purple colour on the top. The shape's really easily identified, so again, they're one of my favourites, love them. And they come really big as well, and the big ones are the best ones. This one's just a tiny one, but it's very cute. Lungfish have four tooth plates, two on the top and two on the bottom. And those plates are bony pieces that take on the role of teeth, gums, and part of the palate in the mouth of the lungfish. So why did lungfish evolve tooth plates instead of just normal teeth? Well, lungfish are omnivorous and their diet is really quite varied. They'll eat everything from algae and aquatic plants to small frogs and tadpoles as well as little fish and other small freshwater creatures like snails, mussels and crustaceans. And they use these bizarre tooth plates to crush their food before they swallow it. The prehistoric lungfish at Lightning Ridge would have had a similar diet and thanks to Vicky's extensive donations to the Australian Opal Centre's fossil collection we can show you some of the things that the ancient lungfish used to eat. There are a few opalized animal fossils that are commonly found at Lightning Ridge and at the top of the list are bivalve mussels, one of the most common animal fossils on the opal fields and also one of the easiest to recognize. These are a type of freshwater mussel which are really similar to modern day mussels. They have not changed a great deal in a hundred odd million years. So I love shells, I love shell fossils and this is one of them. It's just a gem quality black opal shell fossil and you can see the brilliant gem coloured bars and what's fascinating about it is it's got three gem colour bars going through it. Blue, blue green and then into a striking green further down. Opalised mussel fossils are sometimes found in huge quantities at Lightning Ridge and they would have been a great feast for the prehistoric lungfish. Some of the Lightning Ridge opal fields are well known to produce volumes and volumes of mussel fossils. We literally mined trailer loads of these um, mussel shells and they're super cool when you're getting so many. And there's loads of different varieties. So. Again, the, the mussel shells are, are sort of common in terms of um, the fossils around this area, but you have to be mining to find it. And if opal is rare enough, the fossils are even rarer. And we were just really lucky to, to come across a big haul of mussel shells. After the mussel shells, another relatively commonly found opalised fossil is the gastropod or the freshwater snail, also something that would have been dinner for an ancient lungfish. So these ones are little snail shells that came from our own mine many years ago, again from um, an area called emus which just produced the most incredible fossils. We were very lucky to find some beautiful pieces from there. Prehistoric Lightning Ridge had a few species of snails and they turn up pretty regularly as opalised fossils. So these three are little snail shells. The shapes are not so great. They're not really well preserved, but what's beautiful about them is this gorgeous red color and it's just popping out on the sides. So it's pretty awesome that we can see not only the remains of the lungfish, or at least part of its mouth, but we can also see fossils of the kinds of creatures that the lungfish would have eaten over a hundred million years ago. And speaking of food, another thing that's awesome about the modern Queensland lungfish is that it's an apex predator. It's at the top of its food chain. Adult lungfish have no natural predators, probably because they're up to a metre and a half long, weigh up to 40 kilograms. They can sense the electrical fields of other creatures and they can crush snails and mussels with their tooth plates. They're pretty intimidating creatures. Juvenile lungfish, unfortunately, are often not so lucky as the eggs and the young of the lungfish are often preyed upon by other fish. And a little bit more bad news, as unfortunately is so often the case, while the lungfish has no natural predators, human beings are a threat to it, mostly due to our bad habits of interfering with the environment that the lungfish lives in. The Queensland lungfish is a protected species and has been since 1914, and it's illegal to catch them. So. Lungfish, metre and a half long, 40 kilogram slimy, scaly brown, air breathing fish that can sense electrical fields and haven't changed much in about a hundred million years. They're pretty impressive for a fish. It's always incredible when you can look at pieces of a creature from eons ago and also see virtually the same animal swimming around today, practically unchanged. In fact, you can check out this video from a few years ago about just that. These are some more species from prehistoric and modern Lightning Ridge 
that have not really changed much since they were swimming around in the freshwater channels near the great inland sea of Aromanga over a hundred million years ago. This video was made with the help of the Australian Opal Centre and special thanks to Vicky for showing off some of her favourite donations to the museum's collection. If you enjoyed this video please consider subscribing to IDU Curiosity on YouTube and following along on all of the usual social media channels. The links are in the description and thank you for watching.